An astronaut is a person who does not fear problems, but yet sees problems as challenges, and frankly, exciting. When I first started doing the aviation show, or the Damcasters, when I started it out as a podcast, I had a list of people I was desperate to interview. And I've gotten through a fair few of them, but the two names at the top of my list were Helen Charman, the first Briton to go into space, and Eileen Collins, who was the first woman to pilot the space shuttle and then command the space shuttle. So back in February, when we got to go out to DC, to the Udvar Hazy Center to see Discover Yourself and get shown around by Jennifer Levasseur, it was fantastic. But throughout the three, four years we've been doing this now, I've never managed to get anywhere near Eileen Collins. So when on a random Instagram scrolling, I saw a trailer for a film called Space Woman come up, I was super excited because Space Woman is all about Eileen. And the other week, Wendy and I went along to the Picture House at Greenwich to see the film with a Q&A with Eileen there with director Hannah Berryman as well. And I've been nagging Hannah and producer Keith Haviland for a while because I'm really excited about this film and I'm delighted to say that it is superb, but maybe not for the reasons you would think when it comes to a space documentary. So the film is basically sort of following a lot of the story in Eileen's book, which I've always had ready <laughs> with tabs on the off chance I get to interview her. So while I did get to meet Eileen very briefly and she very kindly, he says, does the signed, signed my book for me, which I can't find the page. There we go. It's all signed for me. Isn't that fab? I still haven't had the chance to do that chat. So getting to watch the film was perhaps my opportunity to sort of see the, the sort of questions I'd like asked answered. And like I said, it wasn't what I was expecting for the better. And I should have realized that because Hannah made this superb series called Band, the Mary Whitehouse story. Now, if you're not English or British, you probably don't know who Mary Whitehouse was. A remarkable um, housewife who managed to become sort of an entire generation censor. Um, whereas Keith Haviland's made some fantastic space documentaries in the past, especially The Last Man on the Moon about Gene Cernan, and also the Lancaster doc that was out the other year, in which we interviewed the director on the old hedge hopping days. So how does Space Woman work? Well, I have to just give utter props to Hannah, because the interview that she does that film forms the basis of Space Woman apparently lasted about eight hours with Eileen and she killed it with the opening question which is in the trailer and thanks to, to Keith and Hannah for letting me use clips from the trailer in this review because this question here is damn near perfect. So Eileen what makes a good astronaut? I'm proud to congratulate Colonel Eileen Collins on becoming the first woman to command a space shuttle mission. Commander. Thanks. Thank you. Eileen Collins and her baby girl standing up for mom. You see, catching your subject, your, your interviewee, slightly off guard and getting them to come out of the, the rote. And when we do interviews on, on this show as well, that's where the prep comes in because... If you're interviewing an author who's done the rounds or someone who's very used to speaking, they very easily click into a mode because that's what they do. And what Hannah does at the beginning of this film is disarms Eileen and allows them to go a lot deeper. Now, if you don't know who Eileen Collins is, I've been prattling on for a few minutes now about her. She is a remarkable woman. She grew up in not great circumstances. I'm not going to run through what's in the film, but, you know, tough family life as a youngster. My dad would come home drunk and get into a fight with my mom. It was unpredictable. That was the scariest thing about it. I learned, don't show that you're afraid. That way you control any element of fear that might affect you. Joined the Air Force, became a pilot, went to test pilot school, and in 1990 was part of NASA astronaut group number 13. And it was this sort of single-minded focus that 
she wanted to go to space, that she knew this path, that is what makes her so incredible. And when you sort of read read her book, which you should do because it's great, you can sort of see this passion and this desire. Very similar to Casey Campbell, who we have had on the show, this idea of, I'm going to make it, what do I have to do to get there? And Eileen's NASA career is remarkable. I've, I've got it here. So she was pilot on STS-63, which was when Discovery did their Mir fly around. First woman to fly the space shuttle. She was then pilot again on STS-84 on Atlantis when they docked with Mir. And then famously on STS-93, she was the skipper, the first female commander of a space mission where they launched the Chandra X-ray um, observatory. And they also had a premature engine shutdown on that, which is all, all in the film. They go into details. Now, you don't do that unless you are bloody good. And then you don't command the mission that returns the shuttle to service after Columbia unless you're tippity top. And that's kind of who Eileen Collins is. And like I said before, and I said that Hannah completely disarms um, Eileen with that sort of first question. What that allows in this film is to go beyond space shuttle pilot, fighter pilot, test pilot, commander, Colonel Eileen Collins, and you get to see the person. And that's where good documentaries really start pulling, um, pulling the curtains open to get to know their subject. And throughout the film, you have these wonderful sort of interplays because you've got Eileen sort of front and center, her husband, Pat, who is absolutely lovely on the golf course, because if you were to probably ask him what would he prefer to have been a pilot or a golfer, he would have chosen golfer. Yeah, fair play, man after my own heart. But where Space Woman really, really works isn't with Eileen or Pat or the other astronauts that they interview. It's actually with Eileen and Pat's daughter, Bridget, who was sort of seven, eight, nine years old during the, the, the command missions. And it's the impact of Eileen's career on her and, and the rest of the family, and Pat too, where the heart of this film really jumps out at you and is, is very surprising. And the discussions about you know, having to tell your six, seven, eight year old kid, I can't remember how old Bridget was, about Challenger and how what mummy does is dangerous, but they fix the problem and then they lose Columbia. And this little girl has to see her mum blast off into space on something that didn't come home. Eileen is incredibly articulate, as, as you probably, if you've sort of seen any interview that she's done, she knows how to frame things and discuss things. Bridget is wonderfully articulate as well. And the way she describes the emotions that she's carried through all these years, even post her mum retiring from, from NASA. Mommy's the best. A seven-year-old version of myself was like, mom is gonna die in space. Um, and I need to be ready for that. Really hammers home something that I don't think a film sitting down and doing the things I kind of wanted the film to do, I think it's better that it didn't. So, you know, for me in, in, in here, all the space shuttle return to flight stuff is fascinating. The bits on um, Discovery that, the, that were the wrong way around, the, the pressure that they were under, which they touch on in the film to get <clears throat> SCS-114 off and the shuttle program going again. All of that is in the film, not the technical stuff, but it keeps coming back to Bridget. And it's genius because it takes something that could be, I don't know, a dull space dog with a very interesting central character, but going further and seeing what being Eileen Collins means to the people closest to her, her husband and daughter and son who shows up later on. And I have to say that because of that, because of spending time with Bridget and intercutting with Eileen at the same time that they, they do so well, it becomes this film that is both uplifting and heartbreaking 
and just pure passion on the screen, which I, you, know, you can probably hear from my voice. I'm just trying, I'm trying not to sort of spoil all, all, the, all the good stuff that comes out in it because it really, really is more than you would think it would be. And I, can, I can't recommend it highly enough. And I, I, I hope at some point we'll be able to get Keith and Hannah on the show because there's so many technical aspects of that interviewing process, the editing process to pull it all together that I'd love to discuss with them. But the final product of Space Woman is something that, you know, I turned to, to Wendy, my, my wife, at the end of the screening and she just looked at me, she went, that was fantastic. And I said, that was not what I was expecting. She said, it, it, it wasn't either. When you was expecting what I was kind of hoping for, a sort of techie, space geek sort of film. And it's not. It's a very, very beautiful piece of filmmaking and a masterclass in interviewing because you know, Hannah, all the props to her for, for being able to get her subjects to open up the way they they did. Now, it doesn't delve into some of the th other things in it, like Eileen talking at the 2016 Republican convention or the the the, rum the rumors about her whether or not becoming NASA administrator back then on the first Trump administration. It 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 stays very focused on family with mum going off and doing these four extraordinary things. Into into cut with how Eileen M. Collins, the space shuttle commander, is seen to the world versus being mum at home. And it's a very deft line that they walk, and it's it's a triumph when they pull it off, which which they do. So I just wanted to get out there and shout out to this film because these say I I paid for my tickets. We we went along. We had a lovely evening in Greenwich. Greenwich Picture House is 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 delightful. My minute and a half chatting with, with Eileen was as nerve-wracking as when I met Terence Stamp, a man who is General Zod has terrified me since I was a child, and he was fantastic. But those two are sort of the top most nervous people I've met along the way. But I can just say that you have to track this film down. If 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 you're an Av geek, a, a space geek, whatever, you you'll have known who Eileen is and she is an inspiration because when I looked behind me in the queue there was a lot of younger ladies and, and, and girls there ready to meet her all with you know copies of the book or just the chance to say hello. Eileen is an inspiration and I think this film shows why very very well she is inspirational to to, to me and and to millions of others probably but also who she is when she's just mum and a wife and that is where good documentary and fantastic filmmaking really gets in so many congratulations to Hannah Behrman Keith all the rest of the team the soundtrack's fantastic the editing is absolutely superb and many thanks to Eileen and her family for sitting down and, and, and making this, because this is one of those things that could have gone a number of different ways. And who knows, maybe we'll get the super techie uh, return to flight documentary, that which, which would be, you know, amazing. Because uh, STS-114, Eileen flies the, uh, what's it called? The, um, uh, I've got it written down somewhere. The, there we go, the, the rendezvous pitch maneuver which is where the shuttle flies up to the space station and then basically does an, in, an inverted loop so that they can photograph and check out all the surfaces on the orbiter. And, you know, they do talk about that in the film and it, it's, it's, it's brilliant, especially the imagery they, they've got of, of Discovery doing that. And there's bits in it that are just super geeky and that I loved. And then you get the conversations on early Skype between the shuttle and the family. And it's, it sort of brings you back down to earth, pun intended, in a way that only, only the best documentaries do. And this is one of them. So Space Woman is 
on release. It's on tour, really. So please do check out your local listings. There is a way on the website to request a screening as well for your school or your library. Do check that out. All the links are going to be in the description below. Many thanks to Heavenland Films for letting me use bits and pieces of the trailer throughout this. I'll link the full trailer below as well. Space Woman is superb. It is for not just Avon Space Geeks. It's, it's really for people who just love good human stories and excellent documentaries. So go check it out. And of course, if you are in Arizona, the Pima Air and Space Museum has fantastic space ex exhibits, exhibits, exhibits as well. I can get the word out in the end. Please go check them out. They're continuing to sponsor the show, which is fantastic. I've not been through the space bits yet because I keep looking at the airplane. So there's there's something for everybody at the Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson, Arizona, including the tanks and stuff next door. But there we are. So thank you so much for your time. We're going to be back with more aviation goodness soon. I've had the flu and that's knocked a bunch of stuff back a month or so. So we're going to get back at it. So we've also got an announcement for something else that I'll be doing with the boss lady, Alex Churchill, soon as well. I will be announcing that. And it's going to be fun and short, which is nice. We don't really have time for things like that. So until next time, thank you, everybody. Do take care of yourselves and bye-bye. Go watch Space Woman. It's fantastic. I'll put all the links to the website and things below. Bye-bye. Would a woman crack under pressure? There was a large part of the community that didn't just think she couldn't do it, but were probably actively rooting against her. She once told me you had to be better than the men to be equal. That's exactly what I want to do. Three, two, one. I think until we are tested, we don't know what we're capable of. I'd like to say thanks to all of our fantastic supporters over on Patreon. If you head over to our Patreon page, you can join the fun from just three pounds a month, plus a bit of fat, get your name in these very credits and get all the episodes ad free and early as soon as I get the edit finished. The Aviation Show is hosted and produced by Matt Bone and is a Bonia Broad production.